Would I fly them again? Sure. Are they worth raving about like everybody does? Nope. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is episode 112 and today we are flying a Turkish Airlines 777 to Saigon in business class. The good and the bad are coming up in 10 seconds. Welcome to Istanbul's massive, bright, shiny and new airport. One of the largest airport terminals in the world. It's a lot to take in. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for this flight, it was pretty incredible. What my next five videos in queue are, or you just want to check out the gear that I use on a daily basis, please check out the description below. I arrived here today in transit from my flight from Paris. As soon as I walked into the terminal, I was greeted with a flight information board telling me that my roughly two and a half hour layover was now going to be seven hours long due to this flight being delayed. Also, keep in mind that this flight was already a day late as my original one was canceled and I was pushed back a day. So let's just say that we weren't batting a thousand to begin with. But I'm a firm believer that sometimes negative situations are the best time for an airline or a hotel to truly shine. But who am I kidding? We know that didn't happen here. So if I've still got you, do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for much more content like it. With as much content as there is these days with hidden sponsorships, I hope this channel can just help you cut through the noise, because if nothing else, I will always give you my true, honest opinion. If you're interested, there's also a link to my Patreon in the description below, which along with clicking those buttons really does support the channel on the road to fame and fortune. Kidding. The new Istanbul airport in many ways made me think about one very specific airport, Beijing Capital. Not the new Mega Dashing Airport, which I've never been to, the old Mega Capital Airport, which just like here in Istanbul, seems like it was designed to be big simply for the sake of being big. Everything is gleaming and sparkling, but in reality, there's just a lot of cheap materials used, especially in the lounge, and it was just overall very mediocre. That's fine though. I used to fly Air China because it was a great value, even if the food sucked. Turkish Airlines is a much better airline than Air China, in my opinion. But it's just that concept of thinking that the biggest thing equals the best thing that leads to a lot of the shortcomings for both of them. The perfect example is the business class lounge, which you can see now. It's huge, and there's essentially a copy of this lounge on the other side, which is for Star Alliance Gold Access. My complaints about the lounge are twofold. When I was there, from around midnight until 6am, there was no hot food on offer except for three sad paninis that sat there for hours. Just lots of little meze cups and not cold enough drinks on offer. My other complaint, the service. These were some of the rudest, rudest customer facing agents that I've met in quite a while. So while I was in the lounge, it was mostly empty. The lounge has sleeping pods or suites or something like that available if you have a long layover. Before arriving here, I didn't think twice about them because I had no reason to use them. But now with a seven hour layover, I asked. At the suites check-in area, I was flat out refused since my connection time was technically only two and a half hours. I believe her exact words were, quote, if you want to talk more, go to the front desk. So I did. I was told that delays under no circumstances count towards the minimum five hour connection time needed to access the suites. It's a dumb policy, but the attitude was the real head scratcher. No more than a minute into the interaction, the supervisor still holding my boarding pass, I was asking if an exception could be made since the seven hours is overnight. She basically told me, if I give you a suite, I must notify all passengers on your flight and give them all suites. You can go inside the lounge or you can go somewhere else. What you do next isn't our concern. There's nothing more to discuss. Okay then. By the way, did I mention that it was hot? At one point, around 4 a.m., I ended up going to the outdoor smoking lounge, which is essentially just a big cage, just because I wanted some cool air. I don't smoke. By the time 6 a.m. rolled around, it started to feel like one of those times when you're on the train going home so late that you start running into the next day's morning commute, and you're just not really appreciating everyone else's boundless morning energy. Luckily, I found plenty of grumps just like me in line waiting to board at the gate. Wait a 
As we wait, let's take a look at today's flight stats. We took off around four and a half hours late and made it up to just 35,000 feet for this nine and a half hour journey to Saigon, where we landed three hours behind schedule. Boarding commenced as dawn began to break and we made our way down the long narrow jet bridge to our 11 year old Boeing 777-300ER. I think Turkish would consider their new flagship to be their A350s, but the 777s are certainly their largest. These seats are essentially exactly the same as my previous A330 flight and are split between two small cabins with four rows in the front and three rows in the back for a total of 49 seats in the dreaded 232 configuration. There are not really any better seats than the rest, so it's just up to your preference. If you're traveling alone and don't mind an aisle, I would recommend an aisle seat in the center section. You're more likely to get an empty seat next to you if the flight's not full, and even if that seat is occupied, there's only a 50% chance that they'll exit the seat to your direction, so maybe you'll just be able to sleep really well. I do wish that the outer armrest had the ability to lower when going into full flat mode, but generally speaking, I don't really mind seats like this since I rarely sleep full flat, and they just offer loads of legroom. But yes, it is a dated seat. Non-alcoholic pre-departure drinks were passed around and menus were distributed. At the seat were some nice quality noise-canceling headphones, a small pillow, and a thin blanket. Before our pushback, Versace branded amenity kits were passed around. It was well stocked with Eros branded amenities. There were also different kits available for women. And the pouch itself was one of the nicer quality ones that I've recently received. Note that since the time of this flight, Turkish Airlines has changed brands and switched up their amenity kits. The safety video began and we began our pushback and taxi to the runway. It's very clear that we are in Turkish Airlines territory here, or should I say Turkiye. Turkish Airlines will be soon rebranding using only their Turkish name for the airline after Erdogan elegantly declared recently that, quote, Turkey no longer exists. It is Turkiye. Passing the pretty sleek new control tower and massive technical hangar, we lined up for our departure to the south before turning east. The best sound on earth and takeoff is coming up next. Let's talk about the service. Here's my theory. I think that it's likely that the original crew timed out, and so a last minute crew had to be put together, and let's just say they weren't exactly thrilled for their new assignment. Service was efficient and cordial, but I'd hardly say that it was warm or detail oriented. Also, English proficiency was not the greatest and there were no Vietnamese speaking crew on board. At one time, the crew asked a passenger to translate for them when they thought another passenger was having a health problem, but it was just a false alarm. It took a little while, but eventually we broke through the cloud cover for a bit of sunshine. Today's route would take us clear across Turkey, brushing the Caspian Sea, and across Iran, Pakistan, and India. I suppose this is the wake up light program which came on after takeoff. The crew, who have all had better days, came around and passed out seat covers since the majority of passengers quickly wanted to go to sleep. When fully reclined, the seat does offer a totally flat bed with no height restrictions, though it's clearly not that private of an experience. Covers were put on the pillows that I showed earlier and thicker blankets a la Qatar Airways were left at the seat.
Here's our menu for the flight. Feel free to pause for a closer look. On the wine menu, the red prices are a sample of prices that you could buy the same bottles for in the US. Surely though, the Turkish wines would be cheaper bought in Turkey. While the menu is designed to be dine on demand, that was not the case today, and the menu is reversed due to the flight's delay, with the main meal served later in the flight. I'll also point out that there was no chef on board as Turkish is known for, and there was no cart service, how the appetizers are usually served. I thought it was a holdover COVID thing, but I saw some other trip reports that supposedly were filmed around the same time as mine with the chef and the cart service, so I'm really not too sure. The first meal was nothing that special, and with the exception of the lukewarm spinach pie, the rest of the meal was precisely what was on offer in the lounge. After the meal, I had a nap and woke up somewhere over some beautiful snowy mountains and watched the engine just bounce along. The bathrooms were nicer than average with a well-appreciated full-size sink and molten brown toiletries. While they do offer free Wi-Fi for business class passengers and a pretty good entertainment system, the only thing that kind of boggled my mind a bit is that for many of their TV shows, they had precisely every other episode. You can see here episodes 19, 21, 23, and two of the following season. The sun began to set as we crossed the Bay of Bengal and the primary meal service began. Orders for this meal were taken at the beginning of the flight. I had what I can only tell you was, quote, the best of Turkish meze. It was all delicious, but all cold and a bit sloppy. And the sweet pumpkin soup, which was again just lukewarm, was probably the best thing that I had on the flight. The main dish, described as fresh herbed grilled baby chicken with sautéed spinach, roasted red pepper, and buttered rice. Sorry, I feel like I'm leaning into this complaining really hard at this point, but despite that oil slick that was around it, that chicken must have been some desert chicken because it was dry as <laughs> Desserts were, however, decadent and delicious and had all of the moisture that should have been in the chicken. The cabin sprang into life as the meal trays were cleared and actual lines for the bathrooms formed. For these 49 business class seats, there are only two bathrooms, so plan wisely. As we crossed into Vietnam, we began our final descent and eventually the Saigonese skyline came into view, an always welcome sight. We touched down, taxied our way to the gate, and were greeted with a completely empty international arrivals hall, which was a treat. The bags came out in around 10 minutes, and that is that. As this was a pretty negative review, for anyone that is new to the channel, I invite you to check out the playlist above, which has around 35 of my favorite hotels and flights from the past year. I'm not a negative Nancy, I just tell it like it is. Now onto the flip-flop score. I really do hate whiny negative videos, really I do, but Turkish Airlines really piled the crap onto this pile so to speak. From the cancelled flight, to the delay, the rude lounge staff, lack of hot food, dated seating layout, mediocre crew, lukewarm food, and drier than dry chicken, it was all just no bueno. All of that being said, I do genuinely hope that you enjoyed this review, or at least found it helpful and we'll give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for lots more content to come. My next trip report will be on Vietnam Airlines heading down to Jakarta from Saigon.